Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. Just a couple of announcements before we get started. Um, you can use the question and answer button, that Q&A button on your screen to type questions to any of our panelists at any time. It doesn't have to be when a specific university rep is speaking to address questions um, to other universities. You can use that Q&A button um, during any of the presentations, ask questions about um, the application process, uh, about particular institutions, anything about college admission is fair game. Your camera and microphone are turned off so the panelists won't be able to see or hear you. That Q&A function is really the only way you have of interacting with us. Also, this is just one of many different sessions that are happening, so be sure to sign up for additional uh, panels. There are some more happening this evening, um, but also some more uh, later in, over the next couple of months. So um, do be sure to, to check out some others. And this presentation, as well as all of the others, are being recorded, and you can view those on the same website where you register, which is strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. So I will now turn it over to our first presenter, um, which is Priyanka Singh from Scripps College. Thanks so much, Josh. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. It's it, glad to uh, glad to virtually be with you today. Uh, my name is Priyanka Singh. I use she her pronouns, and I am one of the assistant directors of admission at Scripps College. And excited to share some more information with you. So we'll go ahead and jump right into some fast facts here. So um, first, for context, Scripps is a member of the Claremont Colleges, which is a consortium located in Claremont, California. Uh, we'll get situated with geography and the five C's in the next slide here. Um, but Scripps is a women's college within our consortium. We were founded in 1926 in the height of the suffrage movement. Uh, we are also a small community with just a little over a thousand students, but uh, there's no shortage of academic opportunities to pursue. So you can tell from our popular majors that are listed here that our students study a little bit of everything. Uh, plus another benefit of being at a small school is benefiting from sm small class sizes um, and close faculty interactions as well. All right, so now let's get situated with where we're located in Southern California. So Claremont is a picturesque college town about 35 miles east of Los Angeles. And the Claremont Colleges that I mentioned earlier is a consortium of five undergraduate liberal arts colleges and two graduate institutions. So we typically call the five undergraduate colleges the five C's for short. Uh, we're literally right across the street from one another, but each separate colleges that look different, have varied residential components, different academic majors, uh, but but of course, one of the benefits of being part of a consortium is that we get to share resources across our communities pretty easily. Um, there's over 2,000 courses that are taught across the five C's, and Scripps students actually can cross-register and take courses at the other colleges. Um, there's also over 250 shared clubs that students can get involved in, and we also share access to all of our dining halls, so you can go and enjoy a meal at any of our campuses. Uh, this is a really small snapshot of some of the many uh, shared benefits of the five C's, but based Basically what this boils down to is you get the best of both worlds, a small liberal arts women's college experience at Scripps and a larger university style co-ed experience across the five C's. All right, so let's jump right into academics here because there are some really unique aspects of being a Scripps student. So first is our core curriculum, uh, which is a three course, three semester sequence that all and only Scripps students take. Um, each core class is a different experience and you get a little bit of a sense of that from the descriptions in the slide here, but the goal of core is really to give students an opportunity to learn across a wide breadth of subjects and to approach topics and themes through many different perspectives. Um, they're ch a challenging set of courses for sure, but it's the foundation of your academic experience that you get to build upon for the remainder of your time at Scripps. And our students recognize that core is really the piece that helps them strengthen their communication and critical thinking skills. And if you're not 100% sure what you may want to major in, core can give you a peek into different academic areas. Um, speaking of majors, uh, Scripps students don't have to declare their major or majors until spring semester of their sophomore years. Uh, so you certainly have time to figure it out. And if you're multi-interested, about 20% of our students will double or dual major. The last thing that I'll share here about academics is about our thesis requirements. So this is something that you get to work on in your senior year. Every student works on a thesis and it gives you an opportunity to really dive deep into an area of interest within your major. 
All right, so campus life and the student life experience goes well beyond the classroom. And we tend to be a pretty residential community where over 90% of our students are living and learning at Scripps. Um, our residential spaces are some of the most beautiful spots across campus. There's access to courtyards, fountains, fruit trees, uh, even browsing rooms, which are basically mini libraries within your residence hall. So there's a lot to like about living on campus. Um, there's also tons of events and programs that are happening regularly. And I always tell students, you're really only gonna be bored unless you want to be but more than likely you'll probably find a neat club to join or a cool speaker event happening or maybe even a movie screening night that's happening right outside of your dorm. Um, there's also over 30 active clubs at Scripps in addition to the 250 shared 5C clubs that I mentioned earlier. Um, we have a student run coffee house on our campus and a health and wellness center uh, with access to fitness facilities, a beautiful pool space, um, and a relaxation room along with other holistic health and wellness programs. Um, in terms of study abroad, typically about 60% of our students will choose um, a study abroad option in either their fall or spring semester of their junior years. There's a wide array of programs and you can work with our study abroad advisors to help find the right program for you. All right, so I know I mentioned earlier that we are a women's college and there are some really neat benefits to the women's college experience. Um, so Scripps is really a space where you can use your voice, you can lean on your community, recognize your leadership potential and carry these values well beyond the walls of Scripps too. I've heard students talk about how they feel seen and heard in a space that will still challenge them. Um, and they also don't have to compete with their peers. Scripps is inherently more collaborative than it is competitive. You're still going to step outside of your comfort zone and you're gonna be pushed to think deeper, uh, but you don't have to feel like you're pitting yourself against somebody else. Um, our students pretty quickly recognize that their success does not have to impede on someone else's. Um, Scripps students also benefit from having access to leadership development opportunities. And we say this often at Scripps that leadership isn't about the title that's attached to your name, but it's about the impact and the influence that you want to have. So you can lean into the ways that you want to lead and with the resources and programming that our leadership center offers, um, you can really see what collaborative leadership looks like. All right, so for our application process, students can apply through the Common App or the QuestBridge application if you're a QuestBridge scholar. We offer early decision and regular decision rounds. Um, keep in mind these deadlines are subject to change, so you can visit our websites for some more information. And in addition, we do also offer financial aid opportunities, so you can visit our financial aid website to get some more information about applying for aid. Thank you so much. And our next presenter is uh, Tanaz Nurian from Chapman University. Thank you, Josh. While I share my screen, Josh is going to sing for us. He's going to sing some hold music. I don't sing, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm going to fix this. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Tanaz Nurian. I'm an admission counselor at Chapman University. I'm also an alum, so I graduated in 2017 with a BA in Strategic and Corporate Communication. Chapman is a medium-sized liberal arts school. We are located in the heart of Orange County and I'll give you some more information on our location and what it has to offer. We have just over 7,500 undergraduate students and just over 2,000 graduate and law students. Our average class size is 24 students, faculty to student ratio 13 to one. We have 52 majors housed on our campus and 72 minors. It's very common for students on our campus to double major and minor. We have students from all over the world, which is really awesome. We have students represented from 48 different states, four territories and 79 countries and over 53% of our students study abroad and they have over a hundred programs to choose from. So we do have a center for global education to help students find the right program for them but truly the world is your oyster in that realm. So I promised I'd give you a little bit more information on our location. So we are in the heart of Southern California. I'm very biased because I'm born and raised in Orange County. It's always sunny in 75. The weather's always amazing. We had some rain today, but it's not normal for us to be honest. It was around 75 degrees yesterday, but we are very central and accessible to two major cities. As you can see, we're just 35 miles from Los Angeles and just over 90 miles from San Diego. So we do have a Metrolink station just to walk away from our campus that can drop students off in LA and down in San Diego. We're also around 20 minutes from some of the most amazing beaches in the world and around two hours 
from the snow. So some students will actually ski or snowboard in the morning, head down to the beach in the afternoon, and then head over to Disneyland because we're just down the street from Disneyland. So doing all three in the day is actually called the Chapman bucket list. So I did that a couple of times when I was a student. There's always something to do. We're also down the street from Angel Stadium. So some students will actually catch a baseball game on a Friday or even intern with the Angels. The companies that you see listed on the slide are just a few places that you'll see students at Chapman interning and working at after their experience. We do have some amazing resources to help students find those internship and job opportunities. Over 85% of our students will take on an internship during their Chapman experience. We have our Office of Career and Professional Development. That's an amazing resource for our students in regards to resume workshops. They host career fairs. We host companies at our school all throughout the year. So they're an amazing resource for you in that realm. And we also have dedicated career advisors. So each college on campus has a dedicated career advisor to help you find those very tailored interests that you might be looking for. Here's a snapshot of our campus. This is one of our favorite spots to hang out for students. There's a Starbucks just uh, in that corner if you're peeking in the, the left corner over there. So we are constantly innovating and expanding our campus. We just opened the Keck Center of Science and Engineering. It's 140,000 square feet and houses our Fowler School of Engineering and our health science majors. It is very Google-esque. If you walk in, you truly feel like you are in Google's headquarters. We also just opened a brand new residence hall known as the K. It houses 400 students, sophomores and seniors, and it's just a walk away from campus. But we are constantly innovating and expanding our campus. We were actually found in 1861, but I promise if you come out and visit, you would have no idea. All the buildings have been renovated since then. We are a division three school. We also house over 190 student organizations that range from the Dungeons and Dragons Club, to religious organizations, sports organizations, all the way to the evolution of Beyonce Club. I was a part of that organization when I was a student, but there's so many ways to be involved from one of our 23 varsity sports to student run organizations on our campus. This is what the fall of 2020 was looking like. I'm gonna shift gears really quickly. We received over 14,000 applications. Our admission rate was looking at around 58%. Our average GPA was a 384. Average SAT was a 1312. Average ACT is a 28. We are actually test optional. So it is not required to send in a test. And I promise you it's not a trick. If you feel like your test, there's some students don't even have the ability to take a test right now just with COVID. But if you feel like your test score does not speak to your academic abilities, you are not required to send it in. A little bit about our admission timeline. The common application typically opens around August 1st. So pay attention to those de dates in red. Feel free to screenshot this if you'd like to as well. You can apply November 1st or January 15th. You can apply early action or early decision by November 1st. You'll find out your admission decision by mid-December or January 15th, which is our regular decision deadline. And you'll find out mid-March. Our deposit deadline is May 1st. So that's coming up really quickly. Uh, a little bit about those deadlines, so early action versus early decision. If you have questions about that, feel free to reach out to us directly. This is the priority deadline for those majors that you see listed on the slide. So film production, screen acting, theater performance, TV writing, pharmacy, and dance. So it's very important to abide by that November 1st deadline. Like I mentioned, January 15th is our second deadline regular decision. We do offer scholarships and financial aid. Over 85% of our students benefit from financial aid. I know I'm closing up on time right now, but feel free to reach out to us. We do have a very large team. We're more than happy to work with you guys one-on-one, -on -one, but I'll let you take it away, Josh. Thank you so much. And our next presenter is Sebastian Brown from the University of Redlands. Hello, everyone. Let me get my screen up here for you. Right, sweet. Well, I'm excited to share a little bit more about the University of Redlands. I myself am also an alum, so a true bulldog for life. Um, if you're not 100% familiar with where the University of Redlands is, we are about 90 minutes inland from the LA and Orange County area, meaning that we're really conveniently located um, here in Southern California. So our students have a 90 minute trip to the mountains, the beach, the desert, 
Disneyland all kind of equidistant to campus. Um, like Tanaz mentioned, here at Redlands, it's a big bucket list item to do all four in one day, and it's um, certainly manageable. We're also really excited to have the Metrolink um, coming to the south side of our campus, allowing students the access through public transportation into LA, Orange County, and San Diego. And something that I certainly think is really important for students to know is that parking is free year round um, for our students on campus. You never have to pay anything additional for um, having a vehicle on campus. Here at the University of Redlands, we are really passionate about creating community and educating the hearts and minds of our students. So I'll start by talking about the heart and the things that our students get involved in outside of the classroom. We have over 120 clubs and organizations ranging from athletics and intramural sports to Greek life, honor societies, um, even things like Quidditch Club. We also have um, a really strong multicultural and first gen programming. We are about 35% first generation students here at Redlands and about 45% students of color. So that diversity piece is really a central core component to who our students are and what they do in their free time. Um, to go along with that and fostering that sense of community here at Redlands, we actually guarantee your housing on campus all four years. So about 90% of our students do live on campus from freshman to senior year. Of course, if you live within 35 miles of campus, you can um, live off campus and uh, commute. And then uh, providing additional uh, academic support for our students so that they're successful throughout all of their years. All of our students do receive two hours of tutoring per subject per week included in their tuition. And most, if not all of our departments will also offer additional tutoring at no extra cost. And that's either from faculty themselves or from students that have done exceptionally well in any of the courses that our students may be taking. In addition to all the on-campus experiences, um, of course, preparing our students for life beyond college. And we send about half of our students overseas at some point during our four years. It's a huge component to the Redlands experience and being a global citizen. We actually have kind of a unique calendar system here at Redlands, which is a 4-4-1 schedule. So it's a four month fall semester from September to December and a four month spring from January until April. That means our students are done at the end of April every year, and they have a full four month summer break, all of May, June, July, and August, which is fantastic. But we do have an optional term called May term, and it's one class that students take just for that month. Some students may elect to study abroad just for those four weeks instead of four months. And there's also a lot of uh, internship opportunities that students can take advantage of with those longer summers or those condensed one month courses. Here at Redlands, we're about 2,500 undergraduate students. That means that our student to faculty ratio is 13 to one and our average class size is about 18 students. When I was a student here, the largest class I ever had was 31 and the smallest was uh, myself and four other students. We had a class of just five, which is a really great way to get to know your faculty. They were always there um, you know, to help and support us and really act more than just as professors, but also as mentors. Here's a quick list of all the academic programs that we offer here at Redlands. A few that I would highlight for you is our Johnston Center for Integrative Studies. It allows students to essentially design their own academic program. A great example is we have an alum who knew that he wanted to work for NASA, any means necessary, but had no intention of being an engineer or an astronaut. So as a Johnston student, he was able to create his emphasis which his degree is literally in astropolitics, where he designed and in, uh, implemented political science and public policy, as well as astronomy, physics, and engineering. He is now a lobbyist for NASA in Washington, D.C. today. The other kind of unique and different program that we offer is our minor in spatial studies, which uses geospatial mapping and data analytics to help use 21st century technology to make 22nd century decisions, whether that is in, focused on environmental impact or in uh, something like location-based geomarketing, um, et cetera. As far as our timeline goes here at the University of Redlands, we have our uh, regular decision and early actions. Those are January 15th and November 15th, respectively. We do also offer fee waivers for students if they feel like they need a, a bit of assistance in um, paying for that common app. 
Of course, with scholarships, uh, the ones that we're the most proud of is our merit scholarship, which this year does go up to $32,000 alone, as well as our Cal Grant guarantee. So students that are Cal Grant A eligible and have a weighted 3.5 GPA by the time that they apply to Redlands, come to Redlands tuition free. So they only pay the cost of living on campus and eating our food and living in our dorms. The last thing that we're excited about is our four-year promise and guaranteeing that students graduate in four years and that includes coming to Redlands undecided or undeclared. Here are some quick ways to learn a little bit more about Redlands through social media and on the web. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. And next we will hear from Amanda and Sheldon from California Lutheran University. All right, I'm going to get us um, our slideshow up and rocking as well. Can you guys see my screen? No? Not quite. Okay, hold on just a hot second. Here we go. Okay. So you guys are getting two and a half people for the price of one because I'm actually nine months pregnant <laughs> right now. And um, Sheldon will be joining me. My lung capacity is quite tight right now. So if I seem like I'm running out of breath, it's as I actually am. Uh, my name is Amanda Wallen. I'm assistant director of admission and coordinator of athletic recruitment at Cal Lutheran. I'm a double alum of the institution. So I've seen every angle, undergraduate, graduate and staff perspective. And we're excited to share a little bit with you today. Sheldon, do you want to introduce yourself and, and hit us up with the first slide? Hi, everyone. My name is Sheldon. I'm one of the admission counselors here. This is my sixth year with the university. Um, and starting off with our numbers. So as you can see on the screen, we are a, a small private liberal arts institution, about 3,000 undergraduates. Um, one of the benefits of um, coming to Cal Lutheran is our small class sizes. So average class size is about 17 students. Um, and although we are um, a Lutheran institution, our students come from 39 different faith backgrounds. So we definitely want to make sure that um, our student population is very diverse. Um, about 27% of our students are the first in their family to go to college. 53% uh, of our students come from underrepresented backgrounds. Uh, we are also a Hispanic serving institution as well. So we definitely have that commitment to diversity. And although we are in California, our students come from 42 states and 49 countries. Um, some of the highlights about the university is that we're only about 25 minutes away from the ocean. Our closest beach is Malibu. And overall, 97% of our students either get a full-time job or go on to grad school within nine months after Cal Lutheran. Yeah, we didn't mention it on the first slide, but it was there. We're located in Thousand Oaks, California, which is just about halfway between Los Angeles and Santa Barbara. Number two, safest city in the country of its size. So uh, families feel very comfortable sending their students to us. Um, but on this slide, I'm gonna talk about uh, sending our students elsewhere. Uh, we're, we're quite well known for our study abroad programs. We have year long, semester long, semester at sea programs. We also offer travel seminars, which are quite exciting for our students. You get to take a class on campus all semester long and then take a two to three week trip at the end of the semester with your class and your faculty member to see that place that you've been studying. So if you don't wanna go away for a really long time, that's a great option for you. Um, when you come back to campus, uh, internships are really the bread and butter of our experiential learning process at Cal Lutheran. So getting outside of the classroom, getting outside of the books, that's where you're going to really build upon your educational and pre-professional experiences. And those are all um, fostered for you through our career services department, which is actually yours free for life once you're a Cal Lutheran student, as well as through our faculty members. Um, so we have students who are interning as soon as their first semester freshman year because they just wanna get plugged in that much sooner so that they can get that much more experience during their, their college years. You can intern during the summer in your hometown as well and have account for college credit at Calu. So there's a bunch of different ways to go about this, but this is really um, our, our key um, staple in, in terms of helping students find their vocation, which is what we stand for at Cal Lutheran. In terms of housing on campus, um, we do offer housing uh, guaranteed for all of our students. Uh, we also uh, offer a suite style housing um, as well. Uh, so it's not your typical dorm, it's two bedrooms, a bathroom in the common area. 
um, shared by either four or five students. Uh, we do provide free parking and laundry for all students who live on campus. Uh, so students don't have to worry about um, paying for that or, um, or uh, being restricted to parking on campus. Uh, we do have 15 residence halls to choose from and they are ranked uh, the 12th best in the state of California. Uh, so that's something we're really proud of. Um, we do guarantee housing for all full-time undergraduate students. Uh, for the first year, uh, three years, it is required for students to live on campus uh, if you live outside of a 30 mile radius. Uh, we also provide uh, Wi-Fi, air conditioning, heating, um, and private bathrooms and showers for all students. So it is a little bit more of that, um, with that intimate um, feel as well. Um, and every student who lives on campus is given a meal plan. Students can use that at an all you need dining facility called the Almond Commons, uh, the Habit Grill, uh, the largest Starbucks in Ventura County, as well as John Bajou. So students have definitely uh, a, a big range of different dining options for them here at Cal Lutheran. Yeah, and if you're visiting us, you'll very likely find Sheldon and I at Starbucks or with a hot cookie from the dining commons in our hands. Um, quickly to touch base on our application requirements, we're on the Common App. It's quite simple, straightforward, standard. We need your official transcripts. We have also gone test optional at this point in time, so it's totally up to you if you want to submit testing, if you're comfortable with that. If not, we're not going to hold you back from completing the application process. We need one letter of recommendation. You can submit really as many as you'd like. Trust me, I've read students who submit 15 letters of rec, and I know how awesome they are by the end of the 15th letter, but one will do the job. Um, this is a little snapshot of our average admitted student profile. We do look at weighted GPA, just so that you know, and all of these dates are listed on our website. In terms of our scholarships and tuition, 97% um, of our students receive some kind of financial aid. So definitely um, we are a very affordable option. You'll see our um, total cost below um, and all of our scholarship opportunities on our website as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is Megan Poston from Whittier College. Hello, let me get my presentation ready. Wonderful. So my name is Megan Poston. I'm the Associate Director of Admission here at Whittier College. So very excited to be here and to tell you more about Whittier College. So Whittier is a small four-year liberal arts college located in Southern California. We are um, in LA County, but we kind of straddle LA and Orange County, which is nice. So students are able to tap into the downtown LA area, the so local beaches, um, as well as tap in for um, in the Orange County and LA area when it comes to internships and opportunities for research and working with different industries as well. So we have virtually every type of industry from tech um, to um, film, um, as well as art, different art opportunities as well. So our students tap into our local area quite often. Um, we have a good balance of residential students that are in, from the local area. So we have students that are coming from about 30 mile radius of campus, a good amount is about 40%. And then our other percent of students are going to be international students as well as out of state students. And we have students coming as close as Arizona, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington or even as far as the East Coast. So we have a good diversity um, group of diverse students that are not only gonna um, have the diversity of where they're coming from, but also the way they look, the way their economic backgrounds um, that are gonna play a role in the classroom setting. Um, we have over 33 different majors offered on campus. Um, right now, here's the list of all the majors that we have offered any of the ones with asterisks, um, so any of these ones over here are just gonna be offered as minors, but students can double major, have a major and a minor, have a major in double minors, whatever they'd like to do. And we even have a self-design major. So students are able to self-design a major from the ground up. Um, it's not just a concentration within a major that you select, you can build the major from the ground up, which is nice. So students have done anything from like, um, we've had a student that did tourism and public health, which is actually gonna be very big um, coming soon 
soon. Um, and then we also have students that are taking on, say, like business, um, taking on the business major and adding very specific concentration like social media marketing um, and looking at those different elements. So students are taking their education in their own hands, but we also have some pre-professional programs. So in pre-health, pre-physical therapy, um, pre-law pre as well. And so our students are taking on that as well as um, pre-engineering. Um, we do have a small classroom setting since we are a small liberal arts college. Right now, our um, entire campus is 1,600 traditional undergraduates, and we are an undergraduate focused institution, which means our students are not competing with graduate students for um, the attention of their professors, um, opportunities to do research, have fellowships, or use lab equipment, as simple as that. Um, so our, our classroom setting is small. So right now, our average class size is about six. 16 students, and that's mostly for your um, upper, your lower division courses. As you get into your upper division, a lot of times those classes are going to shrink down quite a bit. So our students are able to ask questions, be involved, and our students are expected to participate in the classroom environment. Talking a little bit, oh, I was a little late on a slide, um, talking about some hands-on opportunities. Um, we have internships and fellowships available. I did mention earlier that our location does lend to a lot of opportunities um, when it comes to internships. So it's very common for students as early as their sophomore year um, to start taking on those opportunities, um, whether that's in the local area, we have students going to Pasadena and they have internships at the NASA Jet Propulsion Labs. We also have students that have internships at um, the movie studio lab, um, um, movie studios, and then also tapping into some of the tech industry that's around us as well. Um, but fellowships are really big on campus where students are paid to do research. And then we also have a lot of service opportunities and opportunities to study abroad. We highly encourage our students to study abroad because that lends to the hands-on experience. And so students are able to claim a one-time scholarship. So every student's um, entitled to the scholarship of $2,000 and that will help fund your education abroad. So students are taking advantage of that, whether it's for a semester, a year, or during our mini term. So we run off a traditional fall and spring semester, but also have mini terms in the month of January and May where you can take on the study abroad trips or take a class on campus. Um, some other elements of our campus, we are a Hispanic serving institution um, and we are a residential campus and an inclusive campus. So a majority of our students do live on campus for at least the first three years. Um, we require students that live um, outside of a 30 mile radius to live on campus. Um, so that does make our campus more residential, um, but we also have a lot, of, a lot of clubs and organizations for students to get involved no matter what their interests are. So if you have something you're involved right now in high school, you can definitely translate that here at Whittier College. And if we don't have a club, you can always create that yourself. Um, one of our more popular departments is our Office of Equity and Inclusion. So students are active within there. Um, we do have a lot of financial aid opportunities um, when it comes to our John Greenleaf Whittier Scholarship. That's anywhere from um, 15000 up to 36000 a year and some scholar other scholarship opportunities. But I know I'm running out of time, so I'll leave our admission process um, information on. Um, but again, if you have any questions, reach out to the Office of Admission. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is Courtney Strickland from Occidental College. Hello everyone, it is so nice to be here and to get to speak with you a little bit about Oxy. Uh, again, my name is Courtney Strickland. I am the Associate Dean of Admission. I am also a graduate of Occidental and really just enjoy the opportunity to get to share what I think makes Oxy a unique experience and why we might fit on your college list. So first and foremost, uh, Oxy is a unique combination of factors in that we are liberal arts and sciences, we are within the city of Los Angeles, and we are this really diverse and collaborative community. And so we believe that all of these three, three things together create a college experience that is going to set Oxy apart, even from these wonderful institutions that I am presenting with tonight. Here is a kind of aerial view of the map, just so you can see where Oxy actually is in LA, um, just a few miles from downtown. We're in a neighborhood called Eagle Rock and Highland Park. So that whole shaded area at the bottom of the map is our campus. And this just gives our students incredible access to be part of a small residential community where they're getting to learn and live together, but also to have all of LA available to them. Um, it was also recently pointed out, actually USA Today did a survey of the 10 coolest neighborhoods in the 
world. Um, and apparently Highland Park is in the top 10. And so that was something we were all really excited about and certainly enjoy in the neighborhood surrounding the campus. As a College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, all of our students have the opportunity to study the humanities, the sciences, the social sciences, the arts, regardless of their major. And that's something we really uh, enjoy and thrive in. Uh, and with just 2,000 students, our average class size is 19 and our student faculty ratio is 10 to one. So the academic experience is exceptionally engaged. You are sitting in classes where you are having conversation. This is um, really a school that is built on um, learning from each other, in fact, in and out of the classroom. This is kind of our full range of academic opportunities. You can see that we have as many programs in the sciences as we do the social sciences, the arts and the humanities. And Oxy students are uh, often choosing some of our more popular majors, economics, biology, diplomacy and world affairs, politics, kinesiology, psychology, for example. But we're also really known for programs that you won't find at other schools that are even smaller majors like critical theory and social justice, which looks at the history of bias and prejudice within society, or comparative studies in literature and culture, where you study literature in the language that it was written. Uh, we are also the only uh, liberal arts college with a food studies program, um, something that we're really excited about and recently added to the curriculum. Oxy is very well known for research. This is something that our students engage in throughout their four year experience, starting with their first year seminar, um, included in their senior capstone comps project. Uh, we also have different research groups on campus, like the marine biology research group where students can get scuba certified and do their research in the ocean. That's something we have in LA. Uh, we also have an undergraduate research center. So we provide funding for students to complete full-time research projects and live on campus every summer with 100 to 150 students who are participating. So they're actually developing their own research topic, their own methodology, really getting to dive into an area of curiosity for them. We really, really take advantage of being in LA and learning from LA. We have just incredible partnerships with community organizations around the city. We also want to make sure that what we're learning gives back. For example, our office, uh, the Center for Community-Based Learning, includes service projects in the classroom, like when the Spanish major translated a local hospital as outpatient guides into Spanish, so learning more while serving others. Uh, trad traditionally, 75% of Oxy students study abroad or participate in one of our study away programs. Uh, we have incredible opportunities for semester abroad programs, research you could conduct in other countries. Uh, this image here shows students doing work in a rainforest in Costa Rica, which is a program we send people out to each summer. But we're also known for our programs that are off campus within the United States. For example, we're the only college that is undergraduate with internships at the United Nations. So all the other UN interns are grad students, but Oxy is able to send UN interns every year. And we have a campaign semester program, which is fully unique. And it gives students a full semester of course credit for working and interning on a campaign in a swing state full time. Just really incredible. We are a residential campus, our students live on campus, we guarantee campus housing, uh, the majority of students live on campus all four years, and I think this is a great way to really take advantage of LA because you get to know each other and as I said learn from each other but also then have access to all of LA around you so it doesn't actually feel like you are living in a small space. Our students have uh, just so much access to things to do on and off campus. On campus, you'll find over 100 clubs at Oxy. We have Greek organizations, although Oxy's Greek life is maybe a little bit unique because we are a school with like co-ed fraternities or a chemistry fraternity. So something that becomes more of um, a single area that you're connected to rather than your, the entirety of your community experience. We are also a division three school with 20 varsity sports and 25% of Oxy students play varsity sports. So this really has a big, a big impact on campus life. But the single biggest tradition of, of Oxy is what we call dance production, which is a student choreographed dance recital that happens every year. So I think you find just a real diversity of interests that we love. Oxy students do incredible things. Being in LA gives us access to uh, internships, job shadowing, networking. In fact, 90% of Oxy students have an internship before they graduate. And as you can see, we have some really incredible employer partners. We also send our graduates on to graduate school in incredibly high numbers. We have found that 75 
25% of Oxy alum have gone on to receive graduate degrees. So we are a test optional school. We are a holistic in, uh, application. We love interviews and hopefully can just get to know you in this process and would love for you to get to know us. So I just encourage you to reach out and stay in touch. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Courtney. So that is the last of our university presentations, but I would like to invite all of the university presenters to turn on their cameras and microphones. Um, we have just a few minutes left. I'll also remind all of our audience, you can still use the question and answer button um, if you have any questions you wanna to pose to our panelists, but um, we could just go round robin style and answer this question. If you could just take 20 uh, or 30 seconds to give us an interesting fact or a fun fact about your school, whether it's a, a tidbit of history or maybe a fun tradition, uh, just something uh, special to share. Um, let's start um, with uh, Priyanka from Scripps. Sure. Um, so I can talk about a, a kind of fun and powerful tradition that we have at Scripps. Um, so we have a graffiti wall that's actually located and nestled between uh, two of our oldest residence halls. Um, so my virtual background is the Rose Garden. Right in front of it is the graffiti wall. And every graduating class since 1931 gets a chance to design a piece of artwork or a mural that represents their time or experience at Scripps. And then graduating seniors will sign their name alongside their class year's mural. So it's a great snapshot of, of Scripps history. Um, it's a great, um, I'd say, depiction of what collective success looks like at a women's college and all of the changing interests and things that have impacted uh, students' experiences at Scripps. So that's a fun tradition that seniors get to look forward to. Thanks, Priyanka. And now uh, Tanez from Chapman. Yeah, I, I love that tradition, Priyanka. For Chapman specifically, and since I am an alum, I loved finals week for some reason. I feel like it's dreaded for a lot of students, but I loved it because we had the most fun programming ever. We had something called Midnight Breakfast where everyone from freshmen to sophomores would, or freshmen to seniors would come out to this uh, general area on our campus and we'd all be in our pajamas and we'd have breakfast at midnight or we'd do puppies in the piazza, which is another area on our campus or they would just randomly be food out in the library. So I loved finals week because it was just, you didn't really know what to expect, but that's just a fun tradition and a memory for me. Cool, thank you. Sebastian from Redlands. Thanks, Josh. Um, we, I would say, have two awesome traditions. One that we certainly uh, love the most is having a live bulldog mascot on our campus since 1918. If you uh, want a dog with a lot of personality, you have to check out Addie's Instagram. She is a diva. She knows she's the queen of the Redlands, but everyone absolutely adores her and students can sign up to walk her around campus and kind of take care of her. Um, the other one for us is our Octomali chant, which has been around since 1921. Um, it's very quirky, kind of a little different, but a great way for our alumni to stay connected. Um, it's very cool when you're walking across the Minnesota airport and you all of a sudden hear someone shout Octomali and you know immediately you have that Redland bond with someone, but you may have never met them before. Um, and that is a really cool feeling for our alums. Cool. Cal Lutheran. Thank you. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, one of my favorite things. I'm our coordinator of athletic recruitment, so my fun facts always go straight to athletics. but. Um, we're actually the home base for a couple pretty notable programs. Um, in my screen, right where my finger is right here, this, these gray buildings, those are actually the headquarters for the Los Angeles Rams. They're on our campus and have been for the past, I'd say, four or five years, and they've just extended their contract with us as well. So we're quite fortunate to have a professional team right on our campus, and that actually has driven some of our academic programs. We started a sports management program this past year in, in conjunction with some of our partnerships there. Um, and additionally, we are the home base to the U.S. Men's Olympic Water Polo Team. So they're on our campus quite frequently. They're a, a sight to see. They're quite tall <laughs> and broad, and they stand out absolutely when you see them um, on our pool deck. And so um, we, we have a, a great emphasis on athletic performance and um, athletic participation and support on our campus. And so that's where I'll leave it for Kelly. Megan. 
Yeah, so Whittier has um, a tradition at the beginning before classes even start for the first years. Um, we have what's called a light of learning where everyone gets together in our amphitheater, faculty, staff, students, parents, and alumni, and all the new students light their candle and they go one by one and sharing the flame of education. And at the end, once they graduate, um, they do it again, but this time instead of lighting it, they're blowing out their candle for the end of their education at Whittier and the start to their, their new journey. Um, so it's closing out their chapter at Whittier, um, but it's always a very moving um, experience to witness at the beginning of a student's experience, but then also at the graduation end as well. And last, Courtney from Occidental. Well, you may know this already, but Barack Obama actually went to Oxy. And since I'm last, I'm gonna take advantage and show this really cute picture of him standing outside the main fountain at our campus, uh, but someone we are particularly proud of. And we actually like to think that he is maybe the first president who went to Oxy and are looking forward to the next one who might show up in the future. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you uh, to all of you for joining us this evening. Uh, thank you, especially to the panelists for uh, sharing with us about your respective colleges. Um, when you close your window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We really appreciate the feedback that you can provide. Also, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is just one of many sessions that are being hosted as part of uh, this college fair series. So be sure to sign up for some others. Um, and then in about a week, you'll be able to find this session as well as recordings of all of the other sessions, um, again, online at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. Thank you so much and everyone have a good evening.